Hello and welcome to Education Talk. I'm Wilma and today we'll be looking at financial education, starting with the company Genistar. Genistar is a financial education company that has a mission to help families become debt-free and financially independent. I have here with me in the studios Steve Jenkins. He has lots of experience in the financial services industry and has given financial education to hundreds of people, thereby helping them become debt-free or invest properly. Steve, you're very welcome to our studios. Good to be here. Thank you, Wilma. You're welcome. Now, over the next few weeks, once a month, we will be going through 10 financial education classes for you, our viewers. And Steve, one of the things we looked at the last time was the current statistics, which states that 95% mm. of people haven't worked all their lives, they paid their taxes, and they yeah. have reached the age of 65, are broke, and have to make the choice between food or heating. It actually mm. shows that there's something wrong with the financial system of the world. Mm. Yeah, um, and the first thing to say is it's nobody's fault really, because um, you'd have had to have um, unbelievable uh, hindsight to see um, these problems occurring um, way back when. I mean, you know, the population explosion, the aging population, and uh, in particularly the Western world, you know, p people through um, advances in technology and science and, and health in particular, now means that people live a lot longer. So that has a strain on our NHS service, um, uh, our health service, and, our, um, and, and the retirement issue and paying out uh, pensions to people. And a lot of people have dependent on pensions. I mean, that's the, one of the mm. problems we have with Greece. Um, mm. The large population of people depend on pensions, mm. and right now the government of Greece has gone bust. Mm. And because of that, a lot of people are not getting their pensions anymore. Sure. And they are broke. Mm. That's right. So it's a big issue, but um, we can do something about it today and tomorrow and going forward. And, and basically, that's financial education. And I'm really excited about uh, these 10 lessons, these 10 uh, classes of financial education that you and I are going to do together and, um, and, and hopefully help a lot of people. Let's start with our children. How best can we teach hmm. our children to invest properly? Well, that's a, that's a big question and um, we've discussed this before and I think we both agree that really the only solution there is to, to teach the parents. You know, that we go to school, we're 14,000 hours uh, in school and uh, an education and we're not taught about money, we're not taught about basic simple things like how to write a cheque or how to run a bank account. So, you know, to, to take that up a notch and start investing, well, you know, that's, uh, that's a lot higher level. Uh, so the real solution is to get a financial game plan, one of these in the hands of every parent, teach them the, the fundamentals um, on how money works, how to get out of debt and become financially independent. And as a result, they'll pass it down to the children. One of the things the parents say, one of the arguments is that they are very busy working mm, to sure. have enough funds to run the family and so they leave all the financial education to the teacher. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and that's a, that's, I understand that. I'm a parent. I, I'm, I've got four children and uh, spending time with them um, is one thing, but spending time with them and teaching them stuff uh, is another. Um, but leading by example is, a, um, is something a parent can do. Um, and if they can get their own finances sorted out and their own financial plans in place and put something called a financial game plan together to become debt free and financially independent, the children will catch it. The children will, will, will pick up on it. Um, so uh, that's part of it. But there, there needs to be time set aside as a family to talk about finance, to talk about um, planning for the future. For the parents to be able to teach the children how to invest properly, mm -hmm. they have to be financially educated themselves. Sure, yeah, yeah that's how, right. How best do we go about this? Should a government have a mm -hmm. community-based centre where people can <coughs> go in and get some financial education? That's actually investing some money into that now. Yeah, I mean, that would be good if they could do that. I mean, they've got a big job on their hands and, uh, and, and lots of other pressing issues. Um, what we've done at Genistar is we've um, trained an army of financial educators across the country and uh, we can go and visit people in the comfort of their own home, teach them how money works and, uh, and show them a plan uh, that we can put together for them to help them um, become debt free and financially independent. Well, anyone can grasp the concepts of how to properly manage their money and it is actually not rocket science.
In the UK, new figures have revealed the country's total personal debt has reached an all-time high. A new report says personal debt has hit £1.4 trillion. Many are going bust while they wait for banks to compensate them for missold products. Hey, the interest of all that debt is costing us £46 billion. But what the banks didn't explain so was that if interest support. rates went down, the businesses had to compensate the banks. Sometimes to the tune of hundreds of thousands of pounds. So the days of working for a company for 40 years and getting a pension check, those days are pretty much over. The economy is an absolute mess when it comes to not only the governments, but as well as people's individual finances. And I think that you'd agree that you cannot turn on a television or open up a newspaper and not see something about the state of the economy, about the challenges that people are having. Part of the problem is, is that we get no financial education on money. It's amazing, they teach us the circumference of a circle, they teach us how to dissect a frog, those are great life skills, aren't they? But when it comes to your personal finances, on how you should actually get out of debt, how to live debt free, and how to become financially independent, we get no financial education. For hundreds and hundreds of years, basic economic principles were that if you wanted to create wealth, you save and accumulate money. Countries were the same way, economies were the same way. But then in the late 80s, early 90s, things started to change and governments realized that if they did two things. One is they printed more money and they also borrowed more money and got consumers borrowing money, they could artificially inflate the economy. And for a short period of time, that works. But now, 20, 30 years on, we're seeing the, the results of those very, very poor economic decisions. So when it comes to your finances, how in the world do you figure out where you are and where you want to go? We offer something called a complimentary financial game plan. And this is where we actually take a snapshot of where you are today, where you want to go down the road, and then it fills in everything in between. I know when I got one of these, it really helped change my life. It covers areas, as an example, financial education, some of the seminars that we actually offer. It covers areas like mortgages to make sure that you actually get the best thing for you and your family when it comes to mortgages. It covers areas, buildings and contents, debt consolidation, IVAs, and even if it gets to the point where people financially need to do bankruptcy, we have specialists in every single one of these areas that can actually help people. Where we're different from an IFA, an independent financial advisor, is we don't give advice. We give financial education to empower you and your family to make the right decisions, and then we have specialists on staff, on team, that actually can help to give you guidance, and in some cases, advice, uh, to be able to give you what I call a PhD, proper, honest direction to help you to get your financial life together so that you can become debt-free and financially independent. In addition, at Genistar, we are strong believers in entrepreneurship. We believe that the basis of a good economy is the small business owner. We teach families how to have their own family business that can be passed down to the next generation. We want to empower people to make good decisions, have their own business, and live the kind of life that we've been able to live because somebody took the time to sit down and teach these concepts to us. You might be watching this video and saying, I could never do this in the area of finance. I don't know anything about it. I can tell you that we have dozens and dozens of people just like you. Many of them are school teachers, coaches, social workers, pastors, people that really do like to help people, but their focus is not about the money, it's about the mission. I think one of the things that really sets Genistar apart from other companies is that we're about the mission, not the commission. 
If you've got an interest in talking with us, please talk to one of our Genistar representatives. And Bob and I and the entire team here at Genistar would love to get to meet you one-on-one -on -one and help to take you to the top. This is Education Talk, and we're looking at financial education today. According to statistics, 95% of people are broke, having reached the age of 65 and have worked all their lives and have paid taxes. They have relied so much on their pensions, but the pension port itself is shrinking and the financial system of the world has actually failed a lot of people. It's broken. I have here with me, still in the studio, Steve Jenkins, who is the vice president of Genista. Steve, mm -hmm. welcome back to the studios. You have 10 financial education classes you'll be taking us through, just one, mm -hmm. one class a month for our viewers. Yep. And let's take a look at some of these classes. Just give us some snippets. Let's start with class six, which you say is called mm. Beat the Banks. Mm. What do you mean by Beat the Banks? Well, first of all, Wilma, um, the first thing that needs to be understood is that uh, banks are a business. They're owned by shareholders and they have to make profits. So by, that, by their nature, they, they are there to make money out of their customers. They're not there to help. Um, they, they make huge profits. And I don't think anyone's surprised, particularly with the, uh, the scandals that have happened recently, that um, they don't do a good job. They don't do right by people. Um, uh, as a generalization. Now, we need them, they're part of the financial system, we can't do without them. But in, in that particular lesson, what we'll do, Wilma, is we'll go through how to best use them, how to use them to your benefit, and look out for the, um, the signals uh, where banks are trying to, uh, to get you to do things that are more for their benefit than, than, uh, than the customer. Which means you can actually use the banks to your benefit. Absolutely. Just the way they try to use the customers to draw to their mm. benefit. Yes. I wouldn't want to use the word they rip, <laughs> they rip some customers no. of some money. <laughs> okay, that's one of the things we look at, how to use the banks to your benefit. Yes. Let's look at the next thing, minimize taxes. There are mm. 10 financial classes, and these classes will be shown on your screen in a minute. The second one, minimize taxes. How... Can yeah, there are, to your benefit by not getting into trouble now. No, no, no. We're not talking about tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about minimising taxes. There are there are legitimate ways in which you can manage your tax affairs, and we'll we'll go through some tips um, uh, on how to um, how to pay a little bit less tax. Um, and uh, there are there are many many useful tools that you can use to do that, and we'll we'll cover all of those. For paying taxes, are you just talking mm. about those who? have businesses who are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or people mm -hmm. who work regularly and go to the pay mm -hmm. system? Well, anybody can set up a business any, uh, and, and, and any expense involved in that business um, uh, is tax deductible. So what you're referring to there, yes, is, is entrepreneurs. Um, that they are, David Cameron said that entrepreneurs will be the solution to the economy uh, when he first came into power. And he's right, because an entrepreneur becomes successful, he then owns a business, he then starts employing people, which keeps the economy moving and brings unemployment down, etc., etc. And the knock-on effect for the, um, uh, to the economy is, uh, is great. So um, we want to encourage people uh, to become entrepreneurs and there, there are tax benefits for doing that. Let's go back to the banks because some people might be saying how, just give yeah. us one example of how you can beat the banks. Um, okay, well, first of all, it's understanding that saving money in a bank over a long period of time is not the right thing to do. Because if you've got, for example, £10,000 in a bank account and uh, you're getting 1%, if inflation's running at 25 then the value of your money is going down in real terms, right? Yeah. So, um, um, but banking's okay for short-term parking for your for your money, saving for Christmas, saving for a holiday. But if you leave it in there for for three, five, ten years, the p the value of it, the purchasing power is going to go down because the price of everything goes up. Mm. So we need to look at other areas to put our money for medium and long term. Okay. I'll leave that till the actual class. Yes, let's, let's do. <laughs> the next one is investment for the long term. Mm. Yeah, in that particular class, we'll be talking about principles. We won't be giving um, uh, investment advice per se. We will be uh, talking about investment principles, understanding how um, stock markets work, understanding how the property market works, um, so that people feel more confident and have the tools to go and explore those areas in more detail. 
You've just mentioned two types of long-term investment, the property mm. market and the stock market. Yeah. Any others? No, for, 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 there are sophisticated ones for, um, for, for wealthy people, but for an ordinary family, um, uh, those two areas, the, the property and stock markets, are, are the places that are easier, easier access and uh, easier to understand. And developing a winning attitude. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I've been doing this a long time, 28 years now, and uh, I've visited thousands of families over that time, helping them with their finances. And the ones that I've seen become debt-free and financially independent um, have a different attitude, let's say, to the ones that, uh, that don't. And um, anybody can win in life if, if they have the right attitude. Um, I've often heard it said, and, and, I've, and I've read it many times, that even if you don't know how to get where you're going, um, if, you, if you have a strong enough winning attitude, you will get there because you'll find a way. And we've all got experiences in our life where it almost felt impossible to do something. And um, we found the way, we found the solution because our attitude was solution uh, conscious, not problem conscious. And if we can, f uh, first of all, um, set a goal, which we cover in one of the, uh, in one of the first uh, lessons that we'll do, set a goal um, to become debt free and another goal to then subsequently become financially independent using a tool like this, the financial game plan. Um, if you go after it with a winning attitude, um, you'll get there. And th that is the little difference that makes a huge difference, um, is the way we think. So it's all about the mindset. Some people are actually problem conscious. Mm. So the first step in becoming financially independent or being able to invest in the long term is to become solution conscious, not problem yeah, conscious. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely very much that. Um, but also there are many people who are watching right now who, who um, I know w won't have any hope. They'll think they're too much in debt or they'll, they'll, uh, they'll not believe it's possible. And uh, what I want to do over the next uh, 10 uh, uh, shows that we do, Wilma, is give people, first of all, a little bit of hope. And from there, that'll lead to maybe a little bit of belief. And when b belief starts to rise, maybe then they can do the most important thing, which is to take action. And if they take action by sending me an email or sending me a text or even calling me on the numbers on the screen um, and the email addresses and websites we have on the screen, um, we can get together. We've got an army of people across the country that can visit them in their home, um, put together one of these um, financial game plans, or FGP we call it for short, and, uh, and that'll get people on the road. That'll get people on the right road to, to the destination that they've decided that they want to um, get to. Let's look at having a budget. Mm, okay. That's probably my favorite one because um, uh, it's interesting that a certain amount of money comes into the home and bizarrely at the end of the month most of it seems to be gone even when people get pay rises. E even when more money comes in at the end of the month um, it seems to flitter away and there's, there's some very simple um, tips that we'll give in that one about uh, how to change that uh, through something we call the daily allowance. But I'm going to save that one for, for when, we, uh, when we go through it. And rules of the money game. What are the rules of mm. the money game? At least you should be able to give us just one rule. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm very fortunate that in my early 20s I was, um, I was mentored and, uh, and managed by a guy um, uh, called Kieran and he was a, I call him the crazy Irishman because he was a, he was a little bit crazy. Unfortunately he's no longer with us but he, uh, when I was very young at 22, taught me something called the rule of 72 and uh, we'll, be, we'll be going through that. Um, um, in that particular class and it, everyone kind of knows that wealthy people understand how the money game works um, and uh, they don't teach this at schools so that's the issue yes and we can cover that that particular um, rule uh, when we cover that class so if they don't teach this at schools what's mm. going to happen to the generation coming up are mm. they going to be worse than those who at the age of 65 are broke I think so I think it's getting worse. I don't think it's getting better at the moment. Um, it's difficult to say because, you know, you, we, hindsight's a wonderful thing and we can't see the future. But as we discussed last time, the baby boom problem is going to happen in 10 years' time, where we're going to have more 65-year-olds than we've ever seen before, which will have a huge strain on the NHS, uh, a huge strain on pensions and, uh, and benefits, and it's, it's a big problem the government are facing. And 10 years is not far away. It'll go by just like that. So, but if we start now and do something about it now and start educating people, uh, we can make a difference. But only to those people who want to take action.
and it is not something that a government alone can manage. I don't think so. It's too much of it's it's not a it's not a political problem. It's a it's it's a um, it's an economic one. It's a, it's a population one. It's a, it's a bigger problem than that. Protect your family and manage risk. Mm. Yeah, um, <clears throat> everybody takes a risk. Every morning they wake up, and every, every morning uh, they're either going to get to the end of that day or not. It might sound humorous, but once they did a survey once that um, uh, every person that's born uh, eventually dies. Um, and uh, as a result, we need to protect our assets in the event of that happening. We need to protect the wealth that we've, pro um, that we've built up through something called a will and maybe a family trust. And it's unbelievable that 70% of people haven't got one of those in place. Um, and uh, we'll be talking about that in, in quite a bit of detail. And really what happens to the wealth when they don't protect it? That's right. What happens to the wealth? Oh, I beg your pardon. Um, well, uh, there's, there's lots of things can happen to it. It can be taxed, uh, which can be protect, uh, we can protect against that. It can be, um, it can be taken. Uh, uh, if you have a will in place, what that means is you're deciding where the money goes after you're gone. If you don't, then it's not your decision per se. It could be someone else in the family's decision deciding where it goes. So um, that's all it does is it puts the decision making in the hands of the person who owns the wealth rather than the people you're leaving behind. Mm. Having an emergency fund. Mm. Yeah, that's common sense but not common practice. Um, we're in a culture now where something goes wrong and we use a credit card to pay for the emergency, which has a knock-on effect because credit card companies charge interest, etc. Yeah, that's et cetera. because the banks are saying you can have the credit card. Absolutely, in terms yeah. of it, you That's know. how they make money, Wilma. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll teach people how to put the right amount of money aside um, to have an emergency fund in place. Because it's inevitable, isn't it? An emergency will happen at some point in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. So going for a credit card in when there is an emergency, it's not... Uh, if you can pay it off quickly, right it's okay. Do. But unfortunately, most people don't do that. So how do you build a legacy? Well, that, that really is uh, with something called a financial game plan. You, you, you're, uh, one of the things that uh, the plan does is it gives uh, you an asset and liability statement and gets you focused on reducing the liabilities and increasing the assets. Um, and then when you get to the end of your time, uh, you end up um, leaving a legacy for the family. And if it's protected correctly, as we said earlier, then that can last for generations to come. Talking about leaving a legacy and reducing the assets, uh, give an example of some assets, sorry, liabilities, reducing the liabilities. Mm. Give an example of some liabilities that should be reduced that mm -hmm. um, some people are not conscious of. Well, believe it or not, a lot of people... Um, when they have a credit card balance outstanding and they're paying their monthly uh, payment to their credit card company, they don't know how long it's going to take to pay that off. So the financial game plan, first of all, shows what we call a debt-free date on each of the debts and um, also shows how much interest they're going to pay over that period of time, which is the shocking bit. So um, we want to show people that in the first instance. And then secondly, through something called a debt stacking program, we can then show them how to pay it off quicker and get rid of it. And then as a consequence, show people how to pay their mortgages off quicker, which is another thing we will show people how to do, is pay their mortgage off. Because banks want to lend you money for as long as possible. Uh, traditionally, a 25-year mortgage was what we all took out. But now people are taking out 30. I've seen 40-year mortgages because the, the banks want you to, uh, to be in debt for as long as possible for obvious reasons. And some people are not conscious of the fact that they can actually mm. pay off their mortgages quicker. Absolutely right. It doesn't have to be 25 years. No, it can be a lot, uh, lot less than that if you focus on it and make it a goal. Mm. One of the things, uh, talking about this, looking at the banks, the banks are always encouraging people to borrow. Yeah. They're always en encouraging people to take money from them, lending to the people. How best can people become aware of uh, these uh, tactics and try to avoid them? Mm. Well, first of all, get the financial education. So we've got uh, 10 shows we're going to do together and you don't have to watch them in any order, but if you watch all 10 at some point and take notes, you're going to get some financial education, possibly for the first time. Um, uh, so that's the first step. And then after that, it's then taking action uh, to put a plan in place. 
up. So mm. just before we go, Steve, what last word do you have for our viewers out there who are saying, what am I going to do? Probably I really mm. want to invest. I've mm. messed up things real bad, but yeah. I do not want my kids to go into the same Mm. steps what should I do well uh, the message is very simple if you if you if you if you, if you want uh, to become debt free if that's relevant to you if you want to become financially independent if you want to protect the wealth that you've accumulated um, give me a call give me a text send me an email get in touch somehow some way and let's organize someone to come and visit and uh, start the process of a financial game plan to help you um, become debt free and move towards becoming financially independent. Because it's not something that the government really can manage on their own alone. It's massive. It's quite big. So it's a big it's a big job. Yeah. It's a big job. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Steve. Thank you. Well viewers, this is Education Talk and today we're looking at financial education. We have here in our studios today Steve Jenkins who is telling us about how to become financially independent because according to current statistics, 95% of people get to the age of 65. They have worked all their lives, paid taxes and at the age of 65 are broke. So something is definitely wrong with the financial system. We'll be looking at 10 financial education classes over the next few months, just a class a month, and you can always tune in to watch these classes. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of our programs.